Well, it's finally October. So today I'm gonna to paint up this classic Black Hawk Champion. Let's see if I can make you green skin lovers proud. Welcome back to Anvil Doom Miniatures. My name is Dietz and it's finally the month I've been waiting for. Yes, that's right, it is October. I've been waiting for this for so bloody long now. And it's finally time for me to paint up one of those green skinned bad boys. I actually haven't painted an orc before. I have painted a few goblins back when I first started, but this will be my first orc, so I'm really, really excited. So with this mini, I'm gonna be entering it in the Golden Demon Compendium competition for Orktober. And I think I'll also enter it in the Sporktober by Midwinter Minis. I'm not too sure, but I'll probably enter it in that as well. Now, it took me a few weeks to find a model I really loved. I originally wanted the Gazgul Thracker, the old school one, but I could not find it. It's basically impossible to find in Australia. So I kept looking and I stumbled upon this bad boy. This is the Black Orc Boss sculpted by the Perrys. And when I saw it, I had to get it. It's an instant classic. And I knew this was the mini that I was gonna enter for October. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not entering this competition to win. I'm pretty much entering just for fun. There's no way I'd come close to winning in this competition because there's so many goddamn good artists that are painting this year. So make sure you check them out on the October hashtag. I just thought it'd be fun to kind of get out of my comfort zone, paint an orc, because I never painted one before, and really push myself and try some new things. So I have my orc, it's time to clean it up a little bit, sand the base and get that prime on, and let's get painting. Now, as this is gonna be more of a display model, I'm gonna tackle it a bit different to the way I usually do it, like when I do my batch painting. So I'm gonna do the harder parts first. So that means the face is first on the agenda. I use two coats of dark green all over the face and the hands. I use Vallejo dark green, but I do find this a little bit opaque, but that's okay and this will work out nicely as I want those recesses to be super dark. Then I mix one part war boss green to the dark green and go over the cheeks, the jaw, the nose, the lips and the ears. Pretty much all over the raised surfaces. Next, I go over it with pure war boss green to the same areas, but this time I don't cover as much. I really want to push myself and give the face plenty of character, so I'm focusing on making the lips and jaw areas have a lot of detail. I then mix in some moot green to the war boss green and go back over these areas using a skinny brush and taking my time. After I'm happy with that, I'll use pure mute green as a highlight to the lips, cheeks, nose, jaw, and lips. I do some little dotting and line work on the lips and the jaw just to make it stand out a little more. Now for the eyes, and I just blotch some black onto the sockets and then add some cornered over the top. Then I use a tiny dot of Evil Suns, and last up, a tinier dot of Uriel Yellow just for the little eyeball. I want him looking like a furious orc. I'm loving the detail on this model, and he's got a pretty cool set of exposed gums. So what I did was mix some white with Evil Suns to get a pretty light, fleshy pink color, and I carefully painted that onto the gums. I then just added some more white to this pink mix and just dotted it on as a highlight. Moving on to the teeth and the tusks, and I use Carrick Stone as my base color and being super careful adding this to each tooth. I don't want to get any Carrick Stone in the recesses because I really can't be bothered cleaning up. I find if I'm super careful, painting overall takes less time. I then hit the teeth with a mix of Carrick Stone and Bone White to the top halves. And then I use a pure highlight of bone white to the tips. So after I finished the face, I thought it'd be a good time to tackle some of the base coats and get those true metallic metals on, as there are a few tricky hard to reach spots, so I thought I'd get them on first. I apply Carrick Stone over those impressively large horns, the skull, and the little bull horns on his crutch. Carrick Stone is a little darker than bone white, so I find it really great for doing a base color for like a bone or an off white. I then use a couple thin down coats of gunmetal to the chainmail, the armor plates, and the weapons. It was important I did this early, as sometimes the chainmail is in hard to reach places, so if I do it now and get it anywhere, I can just paint over with any of the other base coats. Gehenna's Gold is next, and I apply this to that big nose ring, the armor, the battle axes, and the bull's nose ring near his crutch as well. Now it's time to get some vibrancy and color popping on this old orc, and I settled on making the leather parts, the bulls, and the boot tassels all red. I use corn red as the base for my reds, and I'll crank up the vibrancy when I get to the layers. For the leather areas, I go over with dried bark, as it's a nice dark brown to use as a base. I also slap on some wraith bone to the axe poles as well. So the bases are done, and now it's time to slap on those washes, the part I really, really love. Like always, I use trusty old nun oil for my gunmetal and for my leathers. I did go over the chainmail twice as the molds weren't that deep and it was looking a little too shiny. After that, I used some watered down gullum and flesh wash all over the golds. To make my reds a little bit richer, I go back over with a wash of flesh terrors red very generously as I want it to be pretty bright. 
And last up for the washers, I use some watered down skeleton hoard all over the bone areas. Now I wash this down a lot, probably one quarter skeleton hoard to three quarters water. And for the big horns on the helmet, I made sure to let it pull down at the bottom. So the washes are done and now it's time to do some layers. So one thing I want to do with this mini is to give it kind of an illustrated look. And you may be wondering what is an illustrated look? Well, it's something that I don't really want to look too lifelike. I want it to kind of look like it's out of a cartoon in a way, if that makes sense, and just give it a bit more character. And the way I'm going to do this is to give it a little bit more freehand than I usually do and try some new things. Let's get started on the horns and I'm going to copy a technique I did for an old chorf Taurus I painted recently. I glaze Carrick stone back over the horns, but try to direct it away from the base of those horns because I want to leave them a little bit darker. I then apply some black and stonewall grey until I get a super dark grey and apply that to the tips of the horns. I then water down this mix and go hard glazing. I always make sure that the direction of my brush strokes are going towards the top of the horns as this is where I want the paint to sit. After I'm happy with that, I glaze some Carrick stone in the opposite direction, being super careful not to touch the bottom of the horns. I use some pure bone white and add lines at different sizes to the horns, but making sure I stay mostly within the Carrick stone area. I then mix up a little bit of white and bone white and then add some more lines. Then I use pure stone wall grey to add lines to the tips of the horns in the dark area and I make sure these are pretty long. Last up, I mix a small amount of white and stonewall grey to do smaller lines to the very tips of the horns. Now for the fun part, and to make these horns look worn, I do some small nicks with pure black, and then I apply some white lines underneath those black nicks. I really love this effect, and I feel like it's a great point of interest to the horns. I then go over the rest of the model's bone and horn areas using the same Carrick Stone bone highlight method. Time for the reds, and this is where I feel like the mini will start to pop. I make a mix of one part corn red, and one part evil suns and sketch this onto the little bull heads, the leathers and the boot tassels. I'm just going to go over this nice and quick because it will blend into the current base nicely. Next I use pure evil sun and go over a smaller area and I'd be a little bit more careful with the brush strokes this time. I then go over again with some wild rider red as an edge highlight all over. And then last up I do a final highlight of two thin coats orange flare just to the tips of any points and the upward facing edges. The leathers are next, and I use a coat of Doomble Brown all over the dried bark. Then I apply some Scrag Brown to a smaller area as a highlight. And last up, I mix a little bit of Bone White into the Scrag Brown, and I use that for the tips of the knuckles on the gloves. Now it's time to try something new again, and what I'm going to do is attempt those old school cool orc checkers. Now I saw so many videos out there of how to do them, you know, putting the white first, putting the black first, but I think I'm going to do my own thing with this. Now just a quick FYI, I did go over these panels with a bit of Abaddon black first, and I also left the little arm brace blank. I didn't paint any true metallic metals on that either. Using Stonewall Grey, I sketched two lines across, and then two lines down on the panels, and I make them as evenly spaced as possible. I also did this on the arm brace. I use grey because it's neutral and will be easy to cover up with black or white. Using the stonewall grey, I then fill in the squares I want white, nice and carefully. Again, I'm taking my time here. Then using Abaddon black, I fill in the black squares and make sure the corners of each square are touching each other. I then use a pure white highlight to each side of the checkers I did with the stonewall grey. This will give them a little bit more of a dimension and they won't look as flat. Using Dark Reaper, I then do the same thing and highlight some of the sides of the black checkers. And to finish, I just use a tiny amount of Thunderhawk Blue to add a line to the top of the black squares. I then fix up the rest of the arm brace by painting it with gunmetal and giving it a wash of numb oil. While I had the gunmetal out, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to paint the little rivets on the armor as well. Now I'm happy with these checkers, but I feel like it's missing one thing, and that's wear and tear, so I'm definitely going to add some of that. I applied a small amount of Doomble Brown around the checker panels to emulate some rust. Doomble Brown has a really nice red tone to it, so this works well. I carefully then add a small amount of gunmetal under the Doomble Brown, being careful not to cover it up. And then last up, I use a tiny bit of silver under the gunmetal as a final highlight. Alright, we are looking good now and it's time for the true metallics. I just use gunmetal in a glaze consistency to the upward facing areas and then I do a glaze of pure silver to a smaller upward facing area and I also use that silver for an edge highlight wherever it needs it. Same thing with the gold, I just go over the Gehenna's gold and highlight with a small amount of polished gold. Usually I would add a silver highlight to this but I don't think it needs it as I want the gold to be a bit more brass like and not look like a polished gold. 
Now I'm on the home straight and it's time to give these axes a little bit of an upgrade. Usually what I do is use null oil instead, but today I'm actually gonna use watered down black paint as kind of a glaze wash instead. I'm gonna try to do this to give it that illustrated look I mentioned before and obviously to try something new as well. I heavily watered down some black paint and then slowly glaze it on the flat part of the ax, making sure the darker part pulled towards the end. A good tip is to have the weapon or surface you're painting completely flat so it doesn't run anywhere. Once it's dry, I then add a little bit more and keep doing the same technique until I get the level of darkness that I'm after. It's important to remember the shader parts on one side of the weapon will need to be on the opposite areas on the other side of the weapon. Once the shadow parts of the weapons are done, I then glaze gunmetal from the other direction to tie it all together a little bit more. I'll then glaze a little bit of silver to the ends of the weapon just to give it a bit of shine. And to finish this thing, I then mix two thirds silver to one third white and give the weapon a bit of an edge highlight. All this guy needed was a goblin green base and that's pretty much it. And here it is, my October 2023 entry. Thanks so much for sticking around guys, I really appreciate it. I would love to know what you think of my Orc for the Orktober challenge. Let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Cheers.